Now, this is going to be a really unpopular opinion, but I genuinely don't like mechanical keyboards. I've never found one that I actually like. I've tried out plenty of switches and given them enough time to actually get used to the subtle differences between the keyboards, but I just don't like the way that most mechanical switches work. Now, there is one or two exceptions, but for the general style that mechanical switches are in, I really cannot tolerate them. Now, this isn't to say that mechanical keyboards aren't built well. They are built absolutely exceptionally, and I wish that my personal choice had keyboards made this well. And this isn't to say they don't sound cool. They sound really cool, but I don't really type based on the sound experience. I type by the way that it feels. Now, you might be wondering then, okay, what do you actually use then? So what I use is a scissor switch keyboard. Now, this is where it's going to get really unpopular. So a scissor switch keyboard isn't to be confused with a butterfly keyboard. Those are very different things. Apple didn't create scissor switches. That's not a thing that happened. They made butterfly switches, which are these very, very, very tiny things where if you get a speck of dust in them, they break. They do basically function in a similar way. They have this bendy mechanism and a membrane thing in the middle, but butterfly switches feel like you're tapping against a touch screen, really. Scissor switches are what you see on most other laptops. Now, because I bought a keyboard that has laptop style switches on it, I made sure the keyboard I bought has laptop style keycaps as well. So it has the perfectly flat keycaps that have like little uh, bumps on the keys on the home row so you can actually work out where on the keyboard you actually are rather than the ones you see on most other keyboards where there's like a dome on them. Those are supposed to be better for typing because your fingers slide into where they should be and it's easy to work out where on the keyboard your fingers actually are, but I've never really gotten used to those. I think a big part of that is the fact that for a lot of my computing experience, I've been using a laptop, so I am really, really used to having this laptop-style keyboard with the scissor switches and the flat keycaps that going to anything else just feels really, really weird for me. Now, the way that scissor switches work is pretty straightforward. So I have these two diagrams here, I guess one's a diagram, one's a GIF, that show how they function. Now, basically, you have this scissoring mechanism, and once the scissoring closes, that's when the key is actually pressed. So, unlike a mechanical key where you have an actuation point, and then it bottoms out after that, and the actuation point is where the key is actually pressed, in the case of a scissor switch, once you bottom the key out, that's when it actually makes the key press. Now, that might seem like a bad thing, and if you made a really tall scissor switch, that could very well be the case, but because these are generally made to be on laptops, you have to conserve as much space as possible, so they have a really, really short travel distance, and I feel like this is one of the big advantages of actually using a scissor switch. So, I've never really been a fan of using the mechanical keys because I tend to have fairly heavy key presses and don't really take advantage of the fact that you have the actuation point there. I always get tempted to bottom the key out, so having that extra distance doesn't really make any sense to me. Now, even if I properly learned how to make use of the actuation point, unless it was set really, really high, basically at the top of the key press, you probably wouldn't actually see any benefit from it because the scissor switch is still probably going to be a shorter travel distance. Another nice thing about scissor switches is the switch body is incredibly thin. And if you go and combine this with a really thin keycap, like say a laptop style switch, you can get a keyboard that is basically impossibly thin if you make it a mechanical keyboard because most mechanical switches are probably going to take up the height of the entire keyboard. Now, the reason why this is beneficial for me is because I have wrist problems that I just haven't dealt with. They're from work and I just, I haven't dealt with them. Anyway, I don't really like having to bend my wrist any more than I actually have to. So having a keyboard that is really thin is absolutely great for me. Now, I know that I can go and get wrist rests and I can raise up my wrist with a mechanical keyboard, but I still find that because of the keycaps, it's still raising up my wrist more than I really want to, and I'd much rather have it closer to being flat on the desk. I know for dealing with that, I can go and try out one of the ergonomic keyboards, but the problem with that is that I have to learn a completely different key layout, and then dealing with Vim along with that as well is going to be a massive pain, and I'd much rather just stick with what I know works and basically go from there. Now, you've probably noticed that you've never actually heard me typing, and that's because scissor switches are 
incredibly quiet. So the only point where they actually make any noise is once you've bottomed out the key. So if you're a really light typist, it's not going to make any noise whatsoever. If you're a heavy typist like I am, yeah, it might make a bit of noise, but in the case of recording videos, if I use some noise suppression and a noise gate, you actually can't really notice them. So I'm going to try to make as much noise as possible with my noise suppression on and see if you can actually hear any key presses. Seems like some of those are being picked up. So let's just go and type on the desk a bit. Let's just press a couple of keys. Unless I'm speaking, you cannot hear anything because the noise gate isn't being turned off. So I'm going to go and disable that and see what it sounds like without that. This is the first test again. And here is the second one again. So if you're trying to record videos and you don't want anyone to actually hear you typing, just add a tiny, tiny bit of noise suppression and noise gating and it becomes completely silent. Scissors which keyboard manufacturers don't really advertise their key weights in the same way that mechanical switches do, so I can't really give you a proper comparison in that respect. But what I can say is that if you're the sort of person who just likes to rest your hand on the keyboard, you're not going to just accidentally press all of the keys unless you have really heavy hands. But also, the keys aren't so heavy that you feel like you're struggling to actually press them. So I would say they're closer to where reds are rather than closer to like where browns or anything like those are. They're still very light keys, but they're heavy enough that it's not really a problem. Now, I would say the best thing about using a scissor switch is you only really need to get used to one sort of switch type. So if you're the sort of person who frequently switches between a desktop and a laptop, it's basically going to be the same keyboard regardless of which device you're actually using. Now, I know that you can plug a mechanical keyboard into your laptop, and I know you can get laptops that actually have mechanical keyboards, but for the second one, I don't want to pay $5,000 for a laptop, and for the first one, I'm usually using a laptop in a space where I can't really plug in a mechanical keyboard anyway, because I just don't have the space to actually put it anywhere, or I'm using it on my lap or something like that, so... In that case, I can't really use a mechanical keyboard, but if you're the sort of person who always uses it at a desk, I guess that's not really that much of a problem for you. Now, I know there's a lot of people out there who like to talk about improving their typing speeds, but the biggest thing about improving your typing speed is actually getting used to the keyboard you're using. So if you're constantly switching between keyboards, you're not really going to be able to get the feel for the slight differences that it has between other keyboards, even keyboards that use the exact same switch. So say you have one keyboard that has cherry blues and another one that has cherry blues, there will be slight differences between them, like the way the keycaps are shaped, the way the base is shaped, the slight differences between how the keys and the keycaps are actually mounted, and just slight things that can affect the way you actually type. Now there is one thing you should look out for if you do want to get a scissor switch keyboard, and that is to make sure that the keys are properly stabilized. Now this is a problem with every sort of keyboard, but in the case of the scissor switch, it is basically game over. So you want to be able to press the key from anywhere on the key, and it should basically work exactly the same way. Yes, it might slightly dip, but if you bottom out the key, it should still actually press the key you're trying to press. If it doesn't, get a new keyboard because it's going to be awful to use. However, the absolute biggest problem with getting a scissor switch keyboard is actually being able to buy them because there's so much propaganda about how great mechanical switches are and how everybody should use mechanical switches that most manufacturers don't really make any. So you're going to have to go and do a bit of digging for them, but I have a couple here that I would really recommend. So my personal keyboard is the Cougar Vanta. This is like a, a game redesigned one. Uh, it's got like RGB colors and things like that. It's got like different color profiles. I don't really care about that. I always keep it on one color profile anyway, which is like this, this rainbow wave one. It looks cool, but if I want to disable the lighting, I can disable the lighting as well. The one problem this one has is that if you press function and then press W, you can probably see that it's got this little like, okay, you can't because their website's terrible and you can't actually zoom in on the image. It's got this little, I guess, wheel thing on the W key. So if you press function and W, it switches your WASD with your arrow key. So as you can see down here, these can also be WASD as well. So if you accidentally press function and then W, instead of pressing, say, super and W, it's going to switch those around. 
My second recommendation is kind of a weird one. So this is the Cherry KC6000 Slim. Now this is the same Cherry who goes and makes mechanical switches as well. So you can get this in white or black. You can get it with the US or European layout. I think you can get some other layouts as well. But... This is basically the same idea as the other one, but it doesn't have the same sort of gamery features the other one has. The advantage this one has, though, is that it has a metal construction. The other one that I showed you is plastic. It's perfectly fine. I know that some people like to do keyboard tests where they do things like, I'm going to flex my keyboard. Like, you never really do that. Your keyboard's going to be on a desk, so if it bends a little when you put tons of pressure on it, doesn't actually matter. You're never actually going to do that. But if you do prefer to have a metal keyboard, then this is probably a great choice as well. The last recommendation I have, some people aren't going to like me for, and that is the Surface Keyboard. Now, this is a bit more on the expensive side. It's 124 Australian. The other one, I think the Vantar is like 70 or 60 or so. I can't remember how much the Cherry is, but this is the most expensive one. You might be able to get them secondhand, though. So this keyboard, I've used plenty of times before. It is absolutely fantastic and I would recommend it to anyone. Microsoft knows how to make a decent keyboard. If you don't want to use this one, what you could do though is go into the secondhand market and get yourself a Mac keyboard from like 2012 before they started using really terrible switches. Those keyboards are also absolutely amazing as well. Now I was going to show you some keyboards that don't have laptop style switches, but in the time between planning this video and making this video, a lot of them have actually been discontinued. I spent a couple of weeks trying to find stuff. Um, yeah, they've been discontinued. You might be able to find them on the second hand market, but there's nothing new you can actually buy. And this seems to be the direction that we're going with scissor switch keyboards. There's less and less of them actually available outside of what Microsoft is doing here. Microsoft's doing something great, but if you don't want to buy a Microsoft keyboard, there's not really that many options available. So one day I might have to actually try out a mechanical keyboard again. And what I'm actually thinking of going with is this right here, the Graham XS or something newer in the future. So this is a very, very low profile keyboard. It has the laptop style switches and also has this really interesting switch design. So this is the Tessero low profile mechanical switch. And yeah, you basically have this little thing that goes up and down like any other sort of mechanical switch but the way it's designed makes it very very thin and honestly I think I could probably get used to this. If any other scissor switch lovers have any recommendations for me be sure to let me know down below because I'm always looking for something that I can use as a backup. Now I've had this keyboard probably for about six months now since whenever I got my desktop system so five or six months now and it has been absolutely amazing but one day it will eventually die and I do want to have something I can replace it with. At this stage it's probably going to be the Cherry KC Slim 6000 but I might change as time goes on. So I think that's pretty much all the simping I wanted to do over scissor switches. I know I'm not going to really convince anyone to actually try them out. Anyone who likes mechanical switches is always going to like mechanical switches. Anyone who likes you know, buckling springs, always going to like those. But if you are looking for a new keyboard, maybe try it out, especially if you are someone who likes to heavily use a laptop. So I think that's pretty much everything for me. Before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald Corbinian, Andre Nathan, Monster Will, Chico Bento, Joseph Mitchell, Peter D. Road, Tony Tushar, and all of my $2 patrons. If you want to go and support my work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, so I'll pay all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere and then this channel is available on odyssey bit shoot and library if you want to watch on a platform that isn't youtube so i think that's pretty much everything for me and i'm out